What is going on everybody? I'm gonna be telling you if you should be picking up this camera. This is the A7S III and I'm gonna show you a real life test of how I would use this camera on an everyday basis. We're getting ready to take a trip up into the mountains for about an hour and a half drive and I'm gonna bring you along with me. And the first thing I wanna talk about in this review is going to be build quality of this camera. So here we are in one of my favorite places in Durango. We're at Baker's Bridge. I just wanted to talk a little bit about one thing that really makes the A7S III so good. It's gonna be the build quality. It's gonna be the flip out screen that I'm looking at right here. What it does is it allows me to film videos like this, vlogging, being able to check your framing, being able to check your lighting, being able to check your audio. Compared to the A6500 that I first started out, it was my first camera, it didn't have a flip screen. The quality of life for the flip screen is just, it's a necessity now. It's absolutely a necessity. One thing about the flip screen, it gets really loose. And from what I've seen, there's no real fix to that. And a couple of my friends that have A7S III's have had that loose screen issue. And definitely something that Sony could fix. But as far as having a loose screen or having no flip screen, I'm taking the loose screen all day. But that's going to be one of my favorite things about the A7S III. It's going to be the flip screen. And now... I'm going to take some photos here of Baker's Bridge. We can talk a little bit about the photo quality. In this camera, you have a 12 megapixel sensor, which in the sphere of photos necessarily doesn't stack up with some other cameras like a Leica that has over 50 megapixels. You think, well, Tyler, this camera is going to take bad photos. And that's kind of true, but it's not 100% entirely true because I've shot all of these photos that you're seeing on screen with this a7s3 the 12 megapixel sensor really makes it a beast in video especially in low light there is a trade-off and when you're thinking of buying a camera you're buying this camera because of the video quality not necessarily because of the photo quality this camera definitely does stack up in the photo department though and you can snag some really amazing looking photos and you get the amazing video quality which you really can't compare to any other camera on the market outside of the fx3 and fx6 maybe the person that's looking for a hybrid video first camera this is definitely for you. But let's go back to the car and we're gonna talk a little bit about the video. So now that we're here at Baker's Bridge, I'm just gonna throw the drone up and get a couple photos and we'll see how it looks. We'll be able to compare, this is a 48 megapixel sensor that's able to take really high uh, quality sharp photos. We'll be comparing it to that 12 megapixel sensor on the A7S III. So get this boy in the air. So as far as video quality goes on this specific camera, I don't know that there's a better hybrid camera out there. This shoots in 4K 120, 10 bit 422 codec, and the image quality is just unmatched. This has been a powerhouse in the industry for so long. We're gonna test out some of the slow motion capabilities. This camera shoots in 4K 120, which it just looks absolutely beautiful. So we're gonna get out in this starting to snow, so I'm super excited to see how the slow motion footage looks, but let's make a quick little uh, 2018 style b-roll sequence so let's get into it it's snowing pretty hard now as you can see look i'll take the dead cat off pretty big snowballs that's just a slight, that's just the smallest amount of B-roll that we could get. The slow motion's amazing now. I've used it to shoot sports, I've used it to shoot real estate, I've used it to shoot all sorts of different things, and every time I'm just so amazed at how good the 4K 120 looks. Another thing that this camera does that's just absolutely unmatched is gonna be its low light performance. So like we talked about in the photo portion, the full frame sensor is a 12 megapixel sensor, which on a normal spec sheet doesn't necessarily sound good, but when you, put it in a low light situation allows this camera to basically see in the dark it it is an absolute powerhouse in low light it has a dual native iso which is probably my favorite part about this camera 
Right now I'm shooting at ISO 800 f2.8 at uh, 1 over 60 with no ND filter and the exposure is great. But if it was dark out, no light whatsoever, I can throw the ISO up to 12,800 and there's going to be next to zero noise. It's one of the most impressive things about this camera and why I think it's such a good camera for the price. The thing that makes this camera just so good is how versatile it is. It's not the most stable camera, but in body stabilization on this is really good, especially if you need, you can throw a warp stabilizer on it or you can shoot in slow motion and get really stable footage. So we're going to be going over the handheld stabilization right now. I have it on a Mantis pod and we're going to go over and try to get a shot of this alpaca at this ranch. So let's go see how it looks. So I'm shooting at 30 frames per second. This camera is for someone who is gonna take their photo and video quality seriously, but maybe doesn't wanna invest into the FX3, FX6 range quite yet. This is something where if you really wanna take photos and videos, the, the way that the body's built is just geared a little bit more towards that hybrid type shooter. Even though it has the same sensor as the FX3, the way that the FX3 is built, it's just this camera in 2024, if you've never used it, you need to try it. And if I was going to recommend one camera for a creator who really wants to take their image quality seriously, this would be the camera that I recommend. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.